Battle of the Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud. And a hardcore Dave. And this is the fucking final, man. Double Agents. Uh, we're going to cover both episodes as if it was like one. Because that's how you watched them, right? Exactly. That's how I watched I would not watch uh, uh, part one and then wait a week and watch a part two. I got to watch them both together. Yeah. And I got to say, it was, I loved it. And I like, I'm always going to do it that way now. I have to watch them both together. It was great watching it that way. Uh, this is going to be Double Agents Episode 18 Recap, uh, No Time to Die, watched by 0 0.93. And just spoiler alert, the next episode is going to be watched by 0 0.99, which is the biggest they've ever got this season. Uh, there's already been an episode that's reached those numbers before, but that was, yeah. So that's good. They ended on a high note, literally. Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Um, but I just want to mention this now while I actually remember it, because I know by the end of this I'm not going to remember. Uh, <laughs> the very last part of part two where it shows, like, TJ, and it's like he's in a room on a desk, and then he pulls open the laptop, and it says, like, classified. I thought it was going to be a little, like, spoiler for the next season. And I thought it was going to say The Challenge and then the title of the next season. And we're all going to be, like, mind blown where it was going to say, you know, like, uh, Free Agents 2 or The Duel 3 or something epic. And instead it was just like, you know, I, I forgot what it said. But it said nothing. And I was like, oh, well, that was pointless. <laughs> okay, Yes. But in a way, though, we might already know what the sequel will be. I mean, it will be Double Agents 2, right? Because didn't they do that with War of the Worlds? They just had the sequel right after that. And then they had that weird trilogy, you know? So I think we could be getting a Double Agents 2. I agree. It's That's probably what we're looking towards. Double Agents 2. Double Trouble. So, yeah, double trouble. <laughs> and uh, that reminds me of uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan and the double trouble. It was a band, Dave. All right. <laughs> I'll take your word. <laughs> All right, man. So this episode starts at the club. This is the last time we're going to be there. Nani's like, I can't believe this, but I might actually miss this fucking stupid ass dome. Well, she doesn't say that, but. That's what I wanted to say. I'm like, oh, wow, this is... Well, that was, like, obviously a lie. I mean, as I'm watching it, I'm just, like, rooting for them to, like, all right, it's the last night you have to be there. Just burn it down. I, like, I just want to see cans of gasoline and matches being thrown and just, like, let it burn down. And then TJ can pick you up in the big Hummer and take you to the final. Like... I wanted uh, Nehemiah and um, Tech to show up and start punching through the, the holes. That's what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> punching through all the walls. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I did like this little part here where Corey's like, he's talking to Fessy and he's like, uh, did he say it out loud? But he's like, I, I really didn't forget what she did to Nelson, you know? And to me, that's the heart of the thing. Like, I fuck, I still feel bad for Nelson, you know? Yeah. So I'm glad that Corey's like, I didn't fucking forget, man. He, I think he just said in co uh, confessional, not to his face. I don't yeah. remember. I know my girlfriend was talking through most of this scene, so I didn't really listen to anything. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't understand it. Oh, shit. That, was, that reminds me. We were going to try and have a, a segment called uh, Brooks... Uh, something notes brook notes yeah and like mm. what she had to say about the episode yeah never happened though um did, uh, did she uh, yeah pepper some stuff reactions of hers as we go through okay because we I'll, need the I'll female perspective of, i'll think of yeah. a couple silently here and then i'll pepper them in yeah <laughs> they may just be uh, my okay. opinions <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like it <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, a bunch of women are like, yeah, you go, girl. Real but really, it's just all your opinions and stuff. <laughs> I tell her what to think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the final fucking TJ is said, hey, man, uh, last place in day one. Won't make it to day two. 
Uh, th third place, though, once you get to day two, you get nothing. Uh, second place, you split $100,000. And first place, you split $900,000. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, before they before they start, um, this is the only thing I have written down. Libra cries next to Nani. He's like, man, I got to I gotta win this and shit. And really, um, I could do without Leroy ever having to mention that this is his last season. It's like every episode, like three times an episode, like this is my last time. And he's always talking to himself. He's like, Lee, go and get it. This is the last time. Lee. <laughs> like, holy shit, man. Yeah, it, it's like it was like last year with Corey. Like, I got my kids. I'm, I'm focused on my kids. And like, even now, like before they go, like they, everyone's packing their bags and they just cut the cord. And he's just painting through some photographs of his kids. Like, okay, like I get it. It's like it's it's fine that that's your motivation or that's how you feel. But it's more on like the editing side of MTV where they're just putting this in like they'll let you know that like four times every episode. And it's like, okay, I get it. Um, so what elevates part one from part two for me is the hurricane winds. To me, I was like, holy shit, this is nuts. I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, it dies down come part two, you know? But yeah. at the time I was, I was thinking like, are they going to have to cancel this? Like, didn't they experience a storm? in Total Madness final, you know, right? I, I, I've never seen it, so. Like, I, I mean, like, uh, uh I think it might have been afterwards. snowing a little bit, but I don't feel like it was, uh, I don't know. Oh, I, don't feel I thought like behind crazy. the scenes, I thought behind the scenes last season they had to cancel big chunks of the season because of the storm, or a big chunks of the final. Oh, That's what I yeah, I do remember yeah. that. I guess, yeah, I think it snowed so much that some of the stuff they wanted to do on the final, they had to change. Yeah. And then they so, recorded the final and they didn't like it, so then they changed some stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then they were like, so we're so mad. We're like, we're so fucking frustrated with this, the storm. Uh, let's have bananas win as well. Why not, right? Who cares? Let's live. Yeah. Let's live a yeah. little. <laughs> so... I like the hurricane. There's a hurricane, and it's like, okay, TJ, I can see the sun shining right now, so it's not quite a hurricane, all right? And... Well, uh, okay, okay. So are you saying it was just windy? And I mean, I'm sure there was, there never was a, a hurricane? hurricane over, like, the, like, southern, like, down by, like, Florida and Georgia and the Carolinas, where there are hurricanes, and then, you know... A thousand miles away the, like the tail end of the storm they were being touched by that and i was like <laughs> <laughs> well you there were some moments where they were like whoa, whoa and shit yeah um, it was super I, windy i, I don't it. know but just it's like it's like it's it like was a, a hurricane <laughs> is like them saying like you're gonna go down into a volcano and it was just like okay it's not a volcano it's just a cave <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, the other thing is, uh, okay, so either way, though, right, there's wind, and I'm like, oh, you guys fucked up, and this is what I had to say at the time, and you kind of deflated all this with you saying, there's no fucking hurricane, but I was like, producers, uh, remember you were going to have 10 skulls in the final, but instead you 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 lied? Had you done the final when you said you were going to, you could have prevented this whole storm thing, you know? Yeah, that's right. That's I asked. forgot about them saying that there's going to be <laughs> 10 skulls in the final. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, no, we changed your mind. Um, the other thing I have to say is um, Nani starts to slow down. And for the most part, it's just how this will play out. Nani will be the slowest. And in the end, cost Leroy money, you know? Like, I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll yeah. talk about that when it happens. We're jumping forward so much, but... Uh. Um, I, uh, rugged Terrain. This is about one of the few finals that I can watch people run through stuff because you have, like, uh, these amazing backgrounds. Um, 
it and and the the roads and the the paths that they take do look treacherous you know mm-hmm. and it's rainy and you know so this was actually kind of cool to actually watch people run you know it, it was not that bad at all yeah I um, agree. Okay. It, was, <laughs> it was definitely a lot tougher than some of the stuff where i forget i forget what season it was but it was where ashley stole the money from hunter and like the trails they're running are just like uh like pathways like dirt roads and it's just like an open yeah. path and they're just like running down that and yeah it's hot outside but it's just like an even straight run they're not like doing the hills and rocks everywhere like your footing is constantly going out like and as like casey ends up hurting her knee it was just like that seemed inevitable like that was going to happen to somebody with that especially uh with that kind of type of footing what a what a happened to me dave you know from experience that my ankles they're like newborn calves. They're like Jimmy Crute's ankles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, fans were like, "We don't fucking know what that means, assholes." Jimmy, we're Crute fans of the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the very beginning, this is this is when Amber B establishes herself as like a fucking killer runner in this thing. Holy shit! Just. No, never seemed to like lose breath or anything. She was able to like run uphill and shit, just like at a mm-hmm. constant pace. Eventually, she has to slow down for CT, I would say. Um, yeah. But she was like, come on. And CT's like, don't yell at me like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. I, I love that. Um, they're going to have a, they're going to have some back and forths, but nothing to, too crazy you know they're gonna argue and bicker just a little bit but it makes sense to me i don't know but we'll, we'll yeah. get to that when we get to that okay checkpoint number one is a oh, fuck it isn't this the 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 redo of the first one decryption yeah, like, remember the first mission something. do you okay what do you call it do you uh is it a i think it works as a bookend at first, I was like, "You cheap motherfuckers!" Can't and you, you? What are you like out of ideas? But seeing it done again, I was like, I, "No, I kind of like it." Not uh, don't don't do this every season, but I liked it this way. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of did like it, and I thought part of the reason I liked it was the fact that it works if there's just four people going for it. It's when you have twelve or fifteen or however many people going for it then it doesn't really work with that many people. But with four people, it works because generally you'd have two people going after the capsule and you have two people putting the wires in. And then then they're kind of like cycling who they're who's going after the capsule. So you just have, you know, one or like one or two people fighting after it instead of having like 12 people fighting after it. Um, okay, so af- uh, I have to announce real quick how people got there because that kind of plays out. First, it's Amber, B, and CT. Then it's Fessy and Casey. Then it's Cam and Corey, and then Leroy and Nani. Just because they're going to get um, an edge, uh, a grenade, whatever you want to call it, that they can kind of give away and affect the game, which I'm not a fan of. You know, I think I think CT and Amber B probably would have won anyways. But I'm not a fan of the grenade stuff. Just play it through, you know. That's how I feel about it. Um, I have to. Oh, I, I have. I've put in so much effort into saying how there's a hurricane there, and I was like, oh my god, the goosebumps. But you've, yeah, <laughs> you've destroyed that. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, it was just windy that day. This sucks. <laughs> it was a windstorm. <laughs> I don't know. Like it, it was. It was definitely bad weather. But a, a hurricane. I don't know. I. Like, six weeks ago, I went on a trip to New Orleans. Like, New Orleans had a hurricane, all right? Like, Yeah, but you... that was years ago, Dave. <laughs> years. <Yeah. laughs> like, how many people freaking lost their lives in it? And then, like, TJ's just throwing out the word hurricane. <laughs> nothing. It's like, that's a serious word today, all right? Yeah, Lil Wayne would be pissed. He's like, I fucking grew up in <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> <Did he? laughs> Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so let's cover the male heat. I just want to say that CT and Fessy have a wrestle part two again. It, it, I, I like yeah. that. 
It was awesome because they did debate that. They were like, uh, you know, I fucking mopped the floor with you. And CT's like, no, you just kind of stalemated me and shit like that. So this was this was nice uh, second round. Yeah, it's because the whole story the whole season has basically been like Fessy has been saying the CT is washed up and he's old news and, you know, he's just an old dog. He can't do it anymore. Meanwhile, like, Fessy hasn't really done anything to, like, show that he's better than CT. And, like, CT is looking at the capsule. He's looking at it. And then Fessy comes up and Fessy doesn't want to just, like, take it and look at it. He decides he's going to rip it away, and he tries to wrestle it away. And then CT's just like, dude, like, he's like, back off. Let's just, let me read it. We'll both read it together. I don't care. But Fessy wanted to wrestle with him, and CT's like, all right, bro, let's fucking do this. And then he just fucking tackles him back. It was great. Oh, yeah, it was sweet. Uh, Fessy was also really annoying with... um uh he kind of threw the key at Corey or or something like that i was like see those are those moments fessy that you're just kind of a jerk you know yeah. like all the unnecessary shit he did in the hall brawl with nelson you know that sort of stuff where i'm like are you guys really friends i don't think so really mm -hmm. yeah um okay ct and fessy in the ufc three rounds pay-per-view first fight of the night <laughs> <laughs> the pay per view. <laughs> Who wins? Uh, I think Fessy might win like a boring split decision. <laughs> you had to throw in the boring or, part. <laughs> well, because I feel like he, he would be like Tito Ortiz, where he might get like top control, but then he wouldn't really do any damage with it. You kind of just lay on him and hold him down. We were talking about how he does all the shit. He'd probably like fucking poke CT in the eye, right? Oh, yeah. CT would be like, "No, I'm okay. I can keep going." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how we'd win. He 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 would he would be like Holm versus um, what's her name for the featherweight belt? Remember that um, oh, the Iron Lady? Uh, yeah, Hit, hitting her after the bell, the end of it. Yes. Round. That's what Fasty would do to CT, just like after the. And then TG would be like, hey, hey, what, whoa, what's, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, oh, he'd hit him after the bell and TG would just be like, <laughs> just laugh at him. Um, CT wins the heat, which is great. And then uh, the female heat, Amber B wins. I really don't have too much written down. I, I th Oh, Casey uh, asked for a check, but didn't get it right. She was really close. Sucks. So Amber B wins. Yeah, she wins overall. Amber B, while like the episode before, when she had to do math, she couldn't do the math at all. She got stuck at the first checkpoint. With this, I'm just like, well, colors are not numbers, but I still have like zero confidence that Amber B is gonna do, like win. I figured she'd be last. I didn't think she had a chance, but she did great. And I was like, holy shit, like that's that's crazy so well and she does the fastest overall in this part it, I, I felt it was so fucking annoying now amber do you want to stay with ct or choose someone else i'm like it's the final already enough with the changes you know like that really meant that it didn't matter who you were had with you going in you could always change and this isn't the last time it's going to happen one more time you know yeah. Unnecessary. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it simply because both times they just chose to stick with their partners. However, if they would have switched partners, I would not have been a fan of it because it's like, this is the final. You have to run it with your partner. Like, the entire 16-episode season just took place. That was the time when you could change your partners. And, like, now it's... It's the playoffs. It's the Super Bowl. You don't get to go out and, like, pick up a different, like, hey, I want the linebacker from the other team. Get over on this side. Like, no, your roster is the way it is. Your team is who your team is. You can't change it. So the fact that they stuck with their partners, it l allows me to overlook what, like, craziness could have happened because I, I wouldn't have liked it. Yeah. Shame on you, producers, for trying 
for just thinking about it, man. Don't do that, right? Uh, all right, checkpoint number two. I think that's when they leave, like, allows you, what, two minutes ahead? Or or they, they averaged out between how they arrived. But they all kind of arrived with each other, like a little group. Yeah. They weren't too far apart. Like, CT and Amber seemed to get there, and then the next six people just got there at the same time. Uh, why are they doing, like, an average time of both people, and then we're going to let you go in those times? Like, show me the time. Like, what was their time? Like, if that's really what you're doing, just put it on the screen so I know what their time was. Even then, like, you can still fake the numbers if you want to, MVP, MTV. <laughs> but, like, give me the numbers. Like, what was your time? I want to know, like, how far ahead was CT and Amber's time compared to Fessy and Casey? Yeah. Yeah, but they never fucking do. Okay, so <clears throat> Fessy is, is overworking Casey, I've written down. Yeah, and then Fessy's parentheses. In parentheses, Dave, I have written just like what Dave did to me in Tough Mudder, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't absolutely true. But okay, so when I, I think I introduced you to the idea of, of Tough Mudder, and I made the mistake in retrospect of saying it's like a final, dude. Little did I know that Dave would run it as a final. He's just fucking going. And I was like, ah, oh, my God. I, I also trained wrong, you know, and other other shit, right? But still, Dave, like, I'd run a final with Dave. It's just I'd probably cost you that final. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you were you were a fucking horse, man. And, well, and, like, it wasn't just you. It was also Eric. And he had a hard time keeping up with you last time and i laughed because like oh eric he thinks he's so fucking athletic and shit but dave outran him or out outdid him but then when i was running with you i'm like i get what he was saying you're just like <laughs> no concern for anyone you're just like Phew. just take yeah, it yeah i don't know it's like <laughs> there's one speed and that's full speed man you gotta go for it and the thing is like to me the like, you want to, like, empty the gas tank. You don't want to leave anything out there on the field, you know? You don't want to be, you don't want to be, like, naughty towards the end where it's like, did I really give it my all? Did I put in all the training? <laughs> did I, did I, I don't know. It's, you don't want to, like, end up, the most satisfying part of, like, being really good, because uh, I trained by running up a bunch of hills, because I lived right next to the giant hill, so it was super convenient. I could just, that bracket hill, I could just run up and down it. And it was super easy because it was right next to my house. So I lost my train of thought. Oh, the best part was when we get to a giant hill, and we had just done, like, three other hills, and there's legit, like, these big, muscly dudes. The dudes you see at the gym who are super loud, grunting, and throwing their weights around, big assholes. And they're laying at the bottom of the hill, and they're holding onto their calf muscles, and they're cramping, you know, like uh, like Wes in Rivals One, where he's just like, "Oh, my leg, oh, I'm cramping," and then I'm just like, "Later, bitch," and I run by, and I'm just like, and I sprint up the mountain. Like normally, I would have kind of just like jogged it or like walked it quickly. I made a point to fucking run up it so this dude can see me sprinting up as fast as I can, and I'm passing people. This is when I'm like, fuck that guy. <laughs> I don't even know him, but I like, I had to make an enemy. You know how you gotta like make an enemy to like motivate yourself? That was me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to get through life? You gotta fucking hate someone? I do it all the time. <laughs> a great motivator. Like UFC fighters do it all the time. I like that. All right. Maybe I'll apply that to my own life. Yeah. We got to beat up carbs. You know? <laughs> yeah. By not carbs taking it out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically, I'm trying to say that uh, it sucks. Casey ends up falling. And really, I... I wasn't, like, completely 100% for Casey. Not against her at all, either. Um... But as soon as she hurt herself, that's when I realized I did like her a lot. Because I was like, no! It was terrible. And her cry out to, like, Fessy was, like, heartbreaking. <laughs> it was fucked up. 
Yeah, like, I've been a fan of Casey all year, and I've thought that she's the most dominant female there and that she's going to win it all. Like, Casey was my number one chick. I, uh, like, Cam has kind of been running the political side of things, but I've always thought Casey was going to be better than Cam in a final. Uh, we did see in, like, the preview for this final that they showed someone slipping and falling. And in the preview, you see someone slip and fall and hurt themselves. And then you see like a quick shot of like Cam looking over and looking down at someone who gets hurt. And it was like a girl screaming. So I knew it wasn't going to be uh, Cam who gets hurt. So it was like, okay, Nani or Casey or Amber. And once I know that Amber is in first place, I'm like, okay, she's far ahead here. And then I'm like, oh, shit, Casey is right ahead of Cam. I'm like, I did the math in my head, and I knew that it was going to be Casey going down because Cam was right behind her. So it was it was definitely Casey. a bummer. Uh, like, the, the real upsetting thing was Fessy's reaction to all of this. <laughs> was it upsetting or... Or was it just like, of course, I mean, what else? Like, I don't know. It's, he's he's almost gen generic meathead character, you know? Like, he like to me, he's Zach. Zach and him are, are, each, are each other, you know? They're the one and the same, in a yeah. way. Yeah. Zach is a little more entertaining, though. He has a, has, a, has a little bit of sense of humor. Fessy, I don't think, has any sense of humor. <laughs> and Fessy will backstab his best friends like Corey and Nelson, where Zach just doesn't have any just, friends to backstab. <laughs> no, he just backstabs Jenna. That's it's fine. Oh, yeah, it's that's fine. true. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get into the checkpoint two, which is the eating portion. Um, ram testicles, liter of blood, fish eyes, sheep heart. Um, I think the eating thing is kind of overplayed, really. I am. I don't care anymore. And, and plus, we already ha did. We already have eating this season, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, you always have it during the season and then in the final. I love the eating. The eating's my favorite part. I was just like, all right. I'm like, they got to show Corey. I'm like, Corey is like the ultimate puker. And after I say that, they're like, let's cut to the Corey montage of puking. And the montage was not as good as it could have been because there's a lot more puking, like the uh, the final of Bloodlines. Corey puked a lot, where they're all like in the suits in Germany outside of like the abandoned Olympic Stadium. Right. <laughs> like Corey has so many um, epic puking moments from all of his seasons. It's great. Um, I got to throw this in there because it just popped in my mind. Fucking Corey, remember in Bloodlines, he had a real bad problem with his leg, his ACL or some shit, right? Yeah. And when that was happening, I was like, well, I don't think he could ever win if he's going to have that problem. But nothing wrong, especially on this terrain. He, you know, if anyone were to hurt themselves, I was kind of think it would it would be Corey. Yeah. Yeah, nice. uh, and I wonder if uh, if Corey had to kind of slow down his pace a little bit and be a little mindful not to wreck his knee or something. I mean, I'm not yeah, – yeah. you'd have to talk to him and interview him to see, you know, how stable his knee is because I guess he's tore his ACL, but he never had surgery on it. So it's just he has no ACL now, which there's, oh. certain, there's certain NBA players who don't have an ACL – and after time, you can, like, rebuild, like, your muscle and your other tendons will kind of, like, stabilize and take over that uh, – the control over your knee and holding it still. But, you know, it would be interesting to kind of, like, interview him, like uh, Ariel Helwani or something, you know, be like, how did your knee hold up in the final, Corey? You know, a little sideline <laughs> reporter action. Uh, I would love that. I would fucking. I would fucking talk to Corey. By the way, uh, Corey, I think he won me over. I, mean, I, I I've liked him before, but I just wanted to mention that he's like got this nice sense of humor that I really like. Um, there's yeah. some moments here that I'll kind of bring up, but yeah. Yeah, I've never really uh, liked it, Corey too, and I think last year I started to like him. But, like, the him constantly mentioning his kids was annoying to me. So I was like, I liked him. 
as like a cute pet brother it was like oh you're you're cool you know you're fun but you're kind of annoying and then like this year it's kind of the same thing and like i like him but he's still just kind of like a lovable loser type personality where it's like all his partners go home like everything always never works out for him and i don't expect him to ever win just because things always just don't work out for Corey. but i i love how like positive he is all the time yeah that could also be the name of like a black exploitation film, Pet Brother. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, real quick though, when when it's right at the beginning, they just got there, Cam and Corey, right? And Corey's like, "Well, it's about time to eat," or something like that. And Corey's like, "Just fucking eat," or something. She like snaps at him, and Corey's like, "I will," and she's like, she kind of comes to her senses. She's like, "Oh, I'm sorry." But there was that one moment where she I was like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> like what a bitch. <laughs> but she fucking, I, I like that, sh- that she was like straight up like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because yeah. you've kind of said where you're like, I don't know if I like her attitude and shit. I'm like, I don't think it's that bad. But that's when it kind of started to bubble to the surface at that moment. Yeah, she did that when she was partners with CT for that one episode where they had like the puzzle at the end of that water thing. And then she's just like, Hang on, just let me do it. And then CT just like backs up. He's like, "All right, all you just fucking do your thing." Like he did not. <laughs> I was like, "We're not fighting here." Um, back with Casey, she's like, "Can we wrap it?" You know, after she was like, you know, fucking on the on, on the ground, she has it wrapped up. So they do get to checkpoint two, and fucking Fessy doesn't eat. Dave, what was going through your mind? What, uh, so, is it celebration? Is it eye rolling? What is it? Like at first, I'm thinking, I'm like, well, there's no way he's going to be able to like win with Casey as his partner. There's no chance because she's hurt her knee. She can't do it. However, you're still thinking like, well, they just had an opportunity to switch partners before that checkpoint, and then if they do it again after this checkpoint, you know. It's like there's an opportunity where Fessy could change partners and he could switch from Casey to Cam if you wanted to. So it's like you can't give up. And like Fessy at the first chance of like, well, something went wrong, Fessy just immediately wants to give up and not try anymore. And it's like how many times in finals have we seen somebody pick somebody up and carry them on their back? Like that is a staple of (laughs) rivals. Well, no, also in a in a cutthroat or whatever. But, I mean, not cutthroat. Was it cutthroat? Ruins? Oh, I, uh, I, well, oh I mean, yeah, they yeah. Had, yeah. I guess <laughs> they had the stretcher, and they had to carry a partner on their stretcher, you know? They threw Susie over their shoulder. They all had a turn just fucking running with her on uh, Ruins. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's like you need to, like, be able to do anything you can to win the final. And, like... Casey is 135 pounds. Like, Fessy, you're 240. She's half your weight. Fessy, you're this big, strong dude. Throw her over your fucking shoulder and run. Like, if you lose, you lose. But at least fucking try, you know? Yeah, it it really, it's like, show us that maybe you could have. Don't leave any doubt, you know? Just fucking eat all that shit. And then, because after this, it's a bunch of kayaking. You know, maybe I, I don't know how long it takes for the human knee to recover from such a thing, but you know, yeah. who knows? Maybe the they could have got a little bit further. And the kayaking yeah. you're sitting using your arms and upper body strength, so it's like you would have been able to kill that. Um, I I have this written down. Amber B with blood on her face might be the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh, in a yeah. weird fucked up way. It yeah. was awesome. I don't, I don't know why. It was just amazing to see. <laughs> I was like, I need that as a t-shirt or something. Like, I just want to see that. That's cool. <laughs> the great thing was is they get to, like, the cave later that night, and it's still on her face. Like, she still hasn't washed her face. <laughs> and uh, CT, CT's like, ah, drinking some Bloody Marys, just throwing it back. It was hilarious. Yeah, that was good. Um... Uh, what else do I got written down here? Oh, okay. So Casey does eventually kind of sn- also yells at Fessy. She's like, just fucking eat it. You know? Yeah. 
And then, like, Fessy's, like, sitting down eventually. He's standing there forever, not eating. And then he, like, sits down, and then TJ is like, are you giving up? And he's like, no. And then TJ's like, well, go over there and eat. And then he goes over there, yeah. and then he just stares at the food and doesn't eat anything. And it's just like, you're giving up. Like, what the fuck? And then eventually TJ just walks up and is like, all right, you've timed out. Yeah. Is it... Are people going to be like, oh, Fessy, you fucking asshole? Or are they going to be like, well, I never would have ate either, you know? Because I, there was an article, I didn't read it, but it said, like, TJ says he didn't feel so much whatever for Fessy that he did for other people. Like, he almost, like, understood why he didn't eat or some shit. I think that's what the article was about. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, why, though? I mean, I was I was upset with him not eating, you know? I, I was really, I was enraged as well. Like, I was right there with Casey, you know? Well, the thing was, is, like, Fessy was probably not going to win, or almost guaranteed not to win because of Casey's injury. He was not going to win. However, how he handled that was just pitiful, and it was kind of a, it was just a pussy way of handling it because he had the built-in excuse of, hey, Casey hurt her knee, that's why I lost. But that doesn't mean that he needs to quit. If she's not quitting with a bum knee, then Fessy shouldn't quit either. And they should give it their all until they're eliminated. That's what should happen. Absolutely. Um, we kind of skipped a little bit because this is the end of the episode. Uh, CT and Amber B do win. And they get an, a tray of extra food that they can give to whichever. Um, and this is about the time where it's going to like uh, cut off or whatever. Um, I think it's like a blood drink and some sheep organs is the extra plate. Um, did you agree with uh, who they chose to give it to? Yeah, I just thought it was silly that they kind of like made it like this huge decision and they cut to commercial break and they're like, who are they going to pick? And then they're like going through all the teams and then the teams are like, no, you should pick them. And then I thought it was hilarious where uh, Cam I think it was Cam said something like, you should give it to Fessy and Casey because they voted you in. He's like, everyone voted me. And she, Cam's like, who voted you? He's like, everyone here has all voted for me. <laughs> it was hilarious. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this is a $900,000 decision or whatever. So we cut to black. And that's the end of that episode. Let's cover episode 19. Uh, the world is not enough. Do you understand that reference, Dave? Um, at all? Yeah, I think. <laughs> James Bond, right? Yeah. Is James that the Bond. name of it? The world is not enough? Yes. Okay. I'm forgetting which one that is. But... Uh, that was pretty okay, so... Yes, it, and um, what's her name? Um, fuck. Christmas Jones. Oh, uh, yes. I <laughs> yeah, I don't remember her name either, but yeah, I remember her. <laughs> like, you're a nuclear physicist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Um, I actually, was so glad that I watched this all together and didn't have to wait a week because I would have been super pissed and salty. They were like, oh, this is what I'm finishing the final on, like, or finishing that episode on. Like, it, it makes no sense. And there's. There's no good way to split a final into two. Like, unless you're going to do first day, second day. But still, yeah, they didn't I end. watch it all together. Right, right. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. I thought we would watch all of day one in one episode. But yeah, they just cut it off there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, CT and Amber B, they decide to give their dish to uh, Cam and Corey. Now, you, you said, like, oh, it's fucking obvious or whatever. But to me, I really wasn't sure. I was, I didn't think to give it to Fessy and Casey at all, right? But it was such a coin toss for me between those other two teams. And do you think it paid off over overall? I guess it did, right? Yeah. Because, I, yeah, it did because Cam does get second. Yeah, Corey and Cam were... I think definitely the second best team after CT and Amber, just because Nani. I feel like Nani was being slowed down by Leroy, or Leroy was being slowed down by Nani, but
but also like Leroy is not super fast anyways. So I, I don't feel like Leroy or Nani is fast. Like Corey can be fast. Cam Cam's not fast. Like she was like walking for a lot of it and like taking baby steps. So true. I mean, it, it probably wasn't even needed or necessary, but it, to give it to Cam and Corey, I think it was probably the smartest thing because they got to, like, a super tough puzzle to put together, and if CP wasn't able to get that puzzle, then, you know, Cam would be, like, the next best puzzle person there, I would say. Um, so they take off, and we'll get into the third checkpoint, which is uh, you got a kayak – go to an island, grab the pieces, kayak back, and <clears throat> put the puzzle together. Um, I don't really have too much written down about this. We already covered the fact that after a while, Fessy and Casey time out. Um, I, I I just want to say, like, I hope Casey comes back. I think she does come back. There's a new cast out, or a season 37 announced, and she's Did on you? it. And I think Fessy, too. Yeah, I think so. I know Fessy's there. Casey, I hope so. I mean, that means her recovery from her knee injury was, went well. I was thinking yeah. maybe she'd have to take a year off. But Does that make Casey Chris Weidman? Mm. I mean, I know it's not the knee, but <laughs> it's just as gruesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only if Weidman comes back. Right now she's Anderson Silva. But without the championships, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so I really don't have too much written down for the kayaks because it's kayaking. I kind of find kayaking boring. I'm sure it's fun to do, but to watch, it's not that great. Because most of the time, they're like, hey, you're not rowing right. That's, that's about it. Yeah, there's usually just a lot of bickering about rowing correctly, which is true because a lot of people have no experience in it and like the lake or river that they were on there was a ton of current and it was all going to the left and if they they need to go to the other side that was a long ass distance like that they had to kayak that was not like a short little jump especially with that current that was a long distance and who was it i think it was uh Leroy and Nani they weren't paddling that well. They weren't like paddling kind of into the current, you know, kind of angling themselves. Because you have to kind of aim to the right. If the current's going to the left, you have to kind of aim to the right, into the current a little bit, because the current's going to be taking you that way. So right from the beginning, it was like the kayak was turned, and they're trying to turn their kayak to get it to go in the right direction. But they can't get it. They're like, okay, try to the left. And they're like, it's not working. They're like, no, maybe try it to the right. And then they're, like, debating on which way to try and battle. It was kind of hilarious to me. Um, you're a kayak man. Don't you own a kayak? Yeah. Yeah. So you know uh, like all that tactical jargon. Like, uh, that's, well, that's, that's left the real. Side. I'm very tactical. That's real shit. No, no. It's more than that, I'm sure. Uh, I'm trying to build oh you God. up, Dave. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that really got me, because it's all about, like, paddling left or right and being in sync with each other, but you also need to dig your paddle into the water, you know? And Amber was not, I think it was Amber, and CT is like, come on, what are you doing? Like, you got a paddle, you're not paddling. She's doing like these little baby strokes and it wasn't working. They tip over, but also Leroy and Nani tip over, and, yeah. and it's done way more dramatically than it probably should have been, right? Because well, they're I not like, oh my God, we got... Huh? I thought it was super dramatic, but then they didn't even show, like, Leroy, like, hopping back in the kayak. Because if you fall out of a kayak, it can be very difficult to get back in. Like, because the other person in it has to, like, lean one way while you're putting all your weight on the other side. And you have to make sure you don't capsize it again. But, like, all of a sudden, Leroy and Nani are just back in the kayak and they're paddling. Like, oh, okay. It's back in it. And this is kind of the same with CP. Like, I'm like, CP's a big-ass dude. I don't think Amber B has enough weight to, like, counterbalance his weight for him to get back in, but he got back in. So. Uh, let's talk about, I mean, the puzzle is whatever. There's, is this the most puzzles we've ever seen in a season? I think it is. Probably. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I 
thought it was cool. Yeah. Because the idea that there's a bunch of puzzles. There was a that there was a bunch of puzzles, but they weren't like super difficult. Like you weren't gonna get to it and just be like, "Well, I'm fucking stuck, and now we're gonna lose the final because we can't figure out one puzzle." They were they were just like medium difficulty. I'd say. Um, yeah, I I also would like it if we didn't like that we we've, we've had tenograms at least twice. I don't want that to happen. I'd rather see like other puzzles throughout. You know, if you're gonna have puzzles all over the place, there's plenty of different types out there. You know. Oh. Yeah. So let's talk about checkpoint. Well, uh, yeah. Um, one more thing on the puzzles here that we can't overlook. What was who was first, second, and third at this point? Oh, oh, I I really didn't write anything down. I think it's going to be C.T., Amber B., Leroy, uh, no, Cam, Corey, and then Leroy, Donnie, yeah. Was that it, okay. It's really that order for the longest time. I don't, yeah, I don't remember who did it to who. However, at this checkpoint where they had, like, the totem pole puzzle, they finish it. Whoever was in second place, it was either... Leroy and Leroy and Nani or Cam and Corey. Cam and Leroy are like engaged to be married, but they didn't leave their puzzle standing next to the other team. They took it and they threw it to the ground, therefore hurting their fiance. Like, what are you doing? Like, leave your puzzle up so they can copy it. But they didn't. I don't remember if it was Leroy or Cam. I'm totally I blank. think it was I think it was Corey and Cam. I think because I think that's the that's the order throughout this whole thing. Yeah. It's like why are you trying to punish the team right next to you? It's like it's got Leroy on it. Like don't punish him. Help him out. I, I if I was Corey and Cam was like, no, we're gonna leave it. I'd be like, no, we're not. <laughs> we are not because well, I don't want to risk losing second place. So I'm kind of glad they did that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If if Corey, like, if we saw that happening, but like, we didn't see any discussion. We just saw him throw it over <laughs> and like destroy it. And I'm thinking, like, your number one goal is to have one of your two teams, like Cam or Leroy's team, to get first place because they're basically married. So you need one of your two teams to win the big money. So you need to be helping that team next to you. And I thought at some point that they were going to start working together to take out CT and Amber because they're in first. But as we'll see, like at no point do they ever help each other out to try and help the other team win. I just thought it was strange. Or, right, or really see CT and Amber B. Like they're just always ahead of them by so much. And these two, those, these two other teams are kind of like right next to each other the whole time. You know, like technically – they're in second and they're in third, but they're so close to each other. I, you know, and that's how it's going to play off in the end. You know, just the foot race between Cam and Nani. You know. Yeah, it it was almost like Leroy and Cam should have been partners because they were practically running it together because they were side by side almost the entire time. Should have just been partners. Uh, let's talk about checkpoint four. Uh, the ice. I have ice cave math problem. Yeah. This fucking cave, man, it looks awesome. It's pretty yeah. sweet. I mean, it's pretty dull because you just do math and then they just stay up there all night. But it looks amazing, though. Yeah, the walls of it with, like, the, the – sh- it's, like, ice frozen, but it's, like, reflected like a freaking diamond. It's so beautiful. It's cool. Um, I have this written down because – TJ's explaining the, you know, how it works. And he's like, and then if you want to go to sleep, you got to dip your uh, face in ice water or whatever. And I was like, what the fuck? And TJ's laughing, this stupid fucking laugh, where he's like, <laughs> and I wanted his tongue to get fucking stuck on the cave wall. <laughs> God damn it. Um, CT gets the math problem first. I mean, you know, Amber B had no chance. We already knew that. And it's going to be an overnight challenge. Honestly, I only have one thing written down. Leroy tells people that this is last season. And uh, did you know that, Dave? Did Leroy ever mention this? <laughs> is he retiring? Oh, no. I mean, like, who was it? Somebody said, they're like, oh, yeah, I could tell. 
was it CT? He's like, CT, he's I think. Bag, and he's like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that's when Corey's like, well, that makes sense because he's been fucking ruthless this season. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, like even uh, like when Wes got sent home, he was like, fuck you, Leroy. Everybody send Leroy home. Did Wes know it was his last season? Or at least you could tell by the way Leroy was playing that Leroy was being pretty tough throughout. Yeah. It's like, you're acting very much like Brad in Cutthroat. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I've written... Back to the math problem for a second. I really thought that what... I kept thinking Amber and CT are in first place. The producers are going to try and rig this in a fashion to help Cam or Leroy win because this whole season has been about Cam and Leroy. They're the like overarching like power couple and everything surrounded like based around them. I thought that they were going to do, all right, well, CT, you finished your math problem. Well, Amber, we're still waiting on you. Both of you cannot continue until Amber, you finish your math problem and you can't get any help from CT. That's what I was expecting. But no, it was like CT finished it. And then it was done. And it was like, oh, so Amber didn't even have to do hers? Like, DT yeah. just did his and it was over. And I'm like, okay. That was interesting. And then as, like, they're starting to do, like, this overnight sleep thing, this, honestly, it's the most boring part of any final is they're like, all right, now you're going to stay up all night. And it's like, it's fine if you're going to do that, but at least edit this down to, like, three minutes of my time. Don't take 20 minutes. <laughs> Showing people just standing there bored out of their mind. Like, that is not compelling television. Just fast forward really quickly. Because I don't want to yeah. watch it. It's super boring. It was it just like, it was this big lull in the middle of the episode that I hated. Yeah, and, uh, and the payoff is that, you know, the next morning, TJ's like, okay, guys, get ready. And they're all just like, fucking dead, dead-eyed and shit. You know, like, I don't want to see that. That's not entertaining to me i don't care seeing people stand there all night is like seeing people kayak or you know or yeah. see, seeing people run a marathon but this one it was saved because the the terrain was so cool um okay so this is the next morning this is checkpoint six or five or something like that um this they have to race up the glacier grab hammers break open the cube and grab the the capsule. Very convoluted, but yeah, yeah, looks cool. great. Yeah. Um, so like at this point, I am totally dug in. Like I love CT. He's got a great partner in Amber who can run for days, and I, I love it so much. I'm rooting for CT. And all I'm thinking is, how is production going to fuck them over, and how are they going to end up losing? So. I'm like, okay, I'm like, there's only one thing that they can do. I'm like, I thought they were going to, like, screw them over with the math problem thing, but that didn't happen. And then I'm like, okay, the one thing that Amber could not do and that's going to slow her down is they're going to bring up some backpacks with a bunch of weights in them, and they're going to be like, all right, now you got to carry a bunch of weights. And I thought they were going to do that to Amber, where they're just going to, like, put, like, 100 pounds in a backpack. She can't even carry it. And then suddenly she can't do anything. And then because they gave CT the opportunity to switch partners, and he's like, no, I'm sticking with Amber. She's got me this far. I thought they were going to try and, like, pull something and be like, all right, well, since you stuck with Amber, the skinny girl, <laughs> now she's going to have to carry some weight. But that didn't happen. I don't know. I just in my head, I'm super paranoid about the producers trying to manipulate who wins in the final. Well, have you been hearing anything about like people are saying the whole season might have been rigged for CT? Like a lot of people are saying, like, oh well, why is it you know why is it that when CT was finally going to go in, it was a double elimination and he could choose and blah blah blah. I'm yeah. like, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, one, it was supposed to be CT versus West. But then they're like, oh, it's girls' day, not guys' day. Yeah, they like they definitely help CT out a lot. And, I mean, yeah, you can say they rigged it for him to get that far. Um, it, And it's so odd because I hate it when they do that for anyone, really, especially when they do it for Bananas. But th that just, I mean, that just kind of shows you that, like, 
producers are like CT man, you're you're great. We're getting behind this. You know, we're pushing you, man. Yeah, yeah. I think they definitely helped him and did stuff like that to kind of help CT stay in the game. However, like him, like doing as well as he does in the final. Like that was just him and him having the partner of Amber B. Like that was just Nani's mistake. Like that was just luck because Nani picked Kyle. Like Nani could have picked CT and CT could have ran this final and gotten second or third place with Nani. Like that was totally possible. But it like it came, kind of came down to Nani picking uh, whoever she picked Kyle. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm. I'm- I don't know. For the record, though, w- the whole thing, like, oh, they they help CT and they arrange it or whatever. I would probably kind of probably naysay that a little bit. I think CT was put in a very bad spot for the majority of the season with Big T. The whole the the heart of the season was these two misfits getting along, betraying each other, but they were always kind of on the bottom rung, you know. That was kind of the thing. So for him to go from there to, like, untouchable in the final, I was like, no, that's what happens. He's that He is that good. So Yeah. And like, I had been saying all year long when all the girls were like, when Anissa and Nani are fighting over who's going to have Bessie as their partner, like, what are y'all doing? Like, why aren't you going for CT? CT is better in a final. Like, it was like or you could pick Darrell. Darrell would be better in a final. Like, yeah. But instead, they're all going after Fessy, and all of us, like, challenged veteran hardcore fans are like, you do not want Fessy as your partner. Like, he's not going to help you win a final. You want a CT or a Durrell. Those are the guys that are going to win. Yeah. We were all like, I don't know what she sees in him, man. Boys of summer, man. Uh, I don't know. He's willing to quit at the drop of a hat. <laughs> Or a drop of a knee, I guess. A kneecap. Which is like a hat. I made it work. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> uh, they... Okay, so CT and Amber, they're in first place. They have to drop that capsule there. Um, but turns out they made a mistake. You had to open it, read all the fucking codes or whatever. Because when you get there, there's like some more decoding shit. So they actually have to run back. That's about as much drama as we're going to get, you know. Uh, later on, they kind of have to go back as well because they kind of miss a trail, you know. But really, it's like more drama is about who's going to get second place, you know, and who's not going to yeah. get money at all because it's kind of a pre-gone conclusion just the way that they're blazing through this final that, like, oh, they're going to fucking take this home, you know. I mean, I was with you. I was also like, "What's well, gonna happen?" You know, I was I was waiting for something to be totally stupid, and they would lose it that way. But um, they they have to do tanagrams at the edge of a cliff. I have. Um, oh yeah, and then eventually they do get lost, um, and that was a real thing. Remember, we experienced this earlier in the season with Corey and Ashley. You know. And yeah. I was like, holy shit, is this how they're going to fucking lose this final? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, and I'm just saying, I'm like, hey, MTV, can you make the signs of where to go bigger than a freaking 5 by 7 postcard? Like, why is it that big and it's like an, a little black and white arrow? Like, come on. Like, make it blaze orange or yellow or a color that will catch your eye, not black and white. Like, oh, it's maddening. Like... If you go deer hunting, if you're marking a trail deer hunting, you have, like, a little piece of plastic tape, and you make it blaze orange, just like, you know, your blaze orange you're wearing, because it catches your eye, and you can see it. And so when when they lost that trail, I was just like, oh, no. I was, like, full panic mode. I was just like, oh, they're going to lose it. Oh, no, they're not going to find their way back. But then I kind of noticed when they came back from commercial – all of a sudden, it's just like they're still like repeating the same. Oh, maybe we'll have to track back. And oh no, we lost the trail. And they were just repeating the same lines. I'm like, okay, it seems like they're editing this in a way to make it a bigger deal than it was. Because I don't think they got really far. I think they were kind of just running. And then they're like, well, this doesn't seem right. And then, you know, I think they maybe just went like 100 feet. 
Yeah, uh, and they're they're climbing, and eventually they look up, they see TJ, and yeah, it's it's fucking done. Um, CT and Amber B win. It's up to now. I think it's Leroy and Cam. They're running for second place. They got to touch TJ somehow, right? Yeah. And Leroy beat Corey. Yeah. So right away, it's like now it's all up to Cam and Nani, and Nani let Leroy down, dude. Yeah. I'm not surprised either. Like I, you know, people have faith on her sometimes, and I'm like, why? I don't really get it. Maybe I guess there is potential, but I've seen her in that spot too many times, and she—that's just what she does. Same thing with Leroy. You know, I—I've never. Me not having faith in Leroy to win a challenge has nothing to do with his personality. Like I, I do like him. It's just I know he's not going to win, and. Uh, should he retire, Dave? Oh. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Should he retire? No, because you know what? A lot more unsuccessful people. Anissa, like, she shows up for, like, 14 seasons in a row, and Anissa can't even make it to the final. Well, I guess she did once, like, a long time ago. But she can't ever win. Like, Leroy... Twice. But. Leroy is at least likable as a person, and people all like him in the house. He's a good guy to have around. Uh, if Leroy had like a great partner in a final, then maybe he'd have a chance. But because like if it was, I don't know, if it was Leroy and Amber, I don't know that Leroy is good enough as puzzles to be able to do as well as CT did because CT is a lot better at puzzles. Um. But yeah, back to the question. Leroy shouldn't retire. I I don't know why he is. Is Cam retiring too? I don't think she is. <laughs> She's like, you're going to be the the house husband, you know? You're going to you're going to raise the yeah. kid. I'm yeah. going to be out there challenging. Cuz Leroy is going to open up a barber shop in Houston. So, if I ever go to Houston, I want to get my hair cut by Leroy. Oh, you're kind of close, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm in Oklahoma, so it's it's probably it's all it's all the South to me. Yeah, it's all the South. <laughs> I like Leroy shouldn't retire. Um, okay. A lot of other people, I would choose to retire over Leroy. Like Leroy's not there yet because he still puts on some good performances. Like when he did in that elimination to Jay. Like, Jay was phenomenal at it, but Leroy just, like, murdered it. It was amazing how fast he went through that thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, right. I don't know. I'm worried because Cam, oh, okay, so... Cam will come back. She'll be on the show. Her husband, boyfriend won't be there. Like, there's so many times on the challenge where someone's in a relationship, but then they end up, like, flirting with some other guy. Things get a little weird. I don't know. Like, if Cam does this, I'm going to be super pissed at Cam. Um, CT is now a four-time champion, just like Darrell. CT is only getting better with age. It's fucked up, you know? Like, uh, you could you could dismiss his uh, War of the Worlds 2 win because he was on a team, but and he never did anything really, you know? <laughs> but it's like, you can't deny him this win. This was good, you know? Uh, I, the War of the Worlds win was super. He like he played the best game throughout the entire season because he was just like a wild card or whatever, and he he did not choose sides. He was like on UK and USA. He played both sides, like both sides protected him because they wanted him. Well, okay, so uh, Amber B, this is her fucking rookie win. That's awesome. Uh, I do. Uh, apparently, I read an article where she was like, when Darrell lost, when he got eliminated, he took me aside really quick and said, like, look out for CT, take him for the final. He'll take care of everything for you. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. That is fucking that's cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Because, I, like I said before, yeah, like Darrell, he conditions his partner. He's probably one of the best partners you could have because, like, what he, did with Aviv, they worked together so much, you know, and uh, so I feel like she was just really kind of uh, 
well talked, well whatever by the time her and CT got together. So that was cool. Um, uh, well, that's the end. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, yeah. Any any closing remarks? Um, like at the end when when they all get to the top of the mountain with TJ, like he's like they start doing interviews with everybody. And it's like they were talking with Corey and Kim and Leroy and Nani for like a year. And I'm like, can we talk to the winners, CT and Amber? Like, they're just ignoring them. They're just like, they're kind of just sitting there, you know, chilling, just like relaxing on, you know, their victory. But I'm like, can we interview the champions who won, please? And then, like, it seemed like they barely got any interview time to talk about their win. But hopefully on the finale of the uh, reunion show. They uh, talk to them a little bit more. Right. Well, uh, you know what? That's the end of the episode. I want to say like, subscribe, comment. Right? This was right. Battle of the Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud. And Hardcore Dave.